Ahead at 6.30, one disqualified sheriff candidate isn't giving up on the fight to be in the election. Ahead, what moves Ron Rogers is making two weeks after the Bibb County Board of Elections kicked him off the ballot. And it was progress report day in Macon Bibb. What the mayor had to say about what's working and some big projects to watch out for in the months ahead. Well, even though we're starting out a bit chilly here in Middle Georgia, it's going to be a warm day. I'll tell you how warm coming up in just a minute or two. Stay with us. Good morning. It's 631. You're watching WGXA Morning News on ABC 16. I'm Brittany Miller here with Gary Thickpen. That's right. Well, Gary, check this out. Two barbers dropped their razors and jumped into action Ooh. to save a little girl. Here is the video showing two Connecticut barbers making it in the nick of time to keep a little girl from running into a busy intersection. Osvaldo Lugo says he and another barber spotted the girl running past their shop's window after she slipped away from her mother at a nearby bus stop. Lugo says the girl's mom was shocked and a little embarrassed, but grateful. I bet she was. My goodness, that I, is scary. Oh my goodness, I know she was grateful and thank goodness for those everyday heroes like that who just on the spur of the moment spring into action. Yeah, all heroes don't wear capes. Some That's of exactly. them put them on their clients. Exactly right. And it's so amazing <laughs> that they were looking out the window at the right time to uh, know to run out and say this little That girl. is, I feel like if I saw a little kid running past the window, I would just turn around. I'd, like, I wouldn't think much of it. Yeah. You know? I can't believe you didn't appreciate my joke there. I a did. Bit <laughs> I, that, I really, that was good. And it was really off the cuff, too. Yes, it was. I deserve I, I can't believe. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I pat on the thank back. Thank you. Thank you. That's I know that's what, what you I were deserve. waiting it for. Really, I really, well, I can't believe it took you so long. Yeah, yeah. All right. How's the weather looking today? Well, uh, I, I tell you, it's looking pretty good, Brittany. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. We're starting out with uh, mostly clear skies here in middle Georgia, looking at 50 degrees. So a little bit below average again this morning. The average low for his 53 so as I said uh, it's a little chilly grab the jacket or the sweater as you head out but you'll be shedding that later today looking at temperatures all across the mid-state we've got some 40s still out there 48 Milledgeville and in gray 49 for South the coolest I see right now of course is uh, Dublin Eastman and uh, down toward Abbeville where we have 43 same thing over there in Soperton so Hopefully this is the last morning we're going to see the 40s until about October and November. So looking at middle Georgia, we're seeing a good deal of sunshine, especially this morning. By this afternoon, we'll see maybe a few clouds moving in, but we'll be jumping up into the upper 70s, so near 80 degrees for high. Looking at your commute forecast as you head out, a good deal of sunshine this morning. Sun rises at 654 as you head home today. We could see a few clouds out there, but staying dry. Sun sets today at 812, and looking at that evening planner, you can see partly cloudy skies through the evening, dropping at 65 by 11 o'clock. Coming up in a little bit, I'll talk about when we may see 90 degrees again here in Middle Georgia. Talk about when we might see some rain. Stay with us. In your local headlines, a paraprofessional in Lawrence County now facing assault charges against a student. The Lawrence County Sheriff's Office says Lisa Hester assaulted a student that was under her supervision at West Lawrence Middle School. Hester has been charged with three counts of simple assault and second degree cruelty to children. Well, brand new evidence is now in the hands of law enforcement in a nine year old double murder out of Telfair County. Bud and June Runyon were killed back in 2015. It's alleged that this man, Ronnie Towns, killed and robbed them after connecting on Craigslist to buy a car. This month, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation says a man was fishing in Horse Creek where he discovered a gun and a bag with driver's licenses, credit cards and a cell phone belonging to the couple. Well, those findings led the GBI to search a home in Telfair County last week. Officials now say they have found even more evidence in the case. Towns is expected to go to trial in August. And a man wanted for a hit and run in Warner Robins has turned himself in. Dustin Nelson is accused of hitting Timothy Thomas, excuse me, Timothy Thomas on Watson Boulevard back in March, leaving him in critical condition. Nelson was wanted on warrants of felony hit and run and failure to report an accident with injury when he drove off after hitting Thomas. Well, a new day for Macon. That's the message from Macon Bib Mayor Lester Miller. He highlighted the growth the county has seen in his annual State of the Community Address. Miller says the addition of the amphitheater at the Macon Mall is only the beginning of positive change, with the venue expecting to jumpstart more business moving into West Macon. 
The mayor also talked about the successes of the Macon Violence Prevention Plan and the blight fight. Yes, we can't ignore the historic drop in the homicide rates thanks to our community working together in our neighborhoods through the Macon Violence Prevention Program, leading us to be named one of the top six cities in the country for violence prevention readiness. The mayor also shared progress on a bill to declare the Okmulgee Mounds Georgia's first national park. He said that it'll create a big boom of tourism for the county. Well, turning to your election news, a disqualified Bibb County Sheriff candidate is fighting to have his name back on the ballot. Ron Rogers has filed an appeal to the Board of Elections decision to remove him from the race. According to Superior Court documents, Rogers claims the board ignored the plain language of candidate qualification laws and is unfairly depriving voters the opportunity to choose their preferred candidate. Rogers and Marshall Hughes were both disqualified two weeks ago after an hours long hearing because the two candidates failed to complete fingerprinting needed to qualify for the sheriff's race. The board approved the duo to be on the ballot before discovering the missing requirements. Now, Rogers attorneys are asking for an emergency hearing. Hughes says he also he also plans to appeal. The deadline to register to vote or change your address for the election in May has passed. The next important day is Monday when early voting starts. Now that'll run three weeks ending Friday, May 17th. Election day is the following Tuesday, May 21st. Go ahead and mark your calendars. Middle Georgians will be voting for important positions in our local governments like mayor, sheriff and district attorney. On the ballot will also be party primaries for those running to represent the mid-state in the General Assembly and Congress. Well, with the 2024 election underway, deep fakes and AI are a concern for many officials. Some states are working to get ahead of the problem. Since last January, almost every state has introduced legislation banning election related deep fakes. Eight states have already passed laws. Rachel Bade has more on what voters need to know to avoid bad information. The voice on the phone sure sounded like President Joe Biden. A bunch of malarkey. But it wasn't. Just days before New Hampshire's primary in January, thousands of voters received this AI generated call using Biden's voice to discourage voters from showing up at the polls. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. The audio had been generated using artificial intelligence. The dupe commissioned by Steve Kramer, a Democratic consultant working for Biden challenger Dean Phillips. Kramer released a statement admitting to sending out the automated call. Phillips' campaign said it was unaware of Kramer's involvement, releasing their own statement saying in part, we are disgusted to learn that Mr. Kramer is allegedly behind this call. And if the allegations are true, we absolutely denounce his actions. As we head into election season, officials across the nation are increasingly worried about the spread of misinformation. Those fears compounded by the arrival of AI tools like ChatGPT, which are now easy to use and readily accessible. A lot of politicians are concerned about deep fakes being created of them, making it look like they said something they didn't say. Researchers and experts in this field are, are a little less worried about that and more concerned about very sort of targeted disinformation that could confuse or change voter behavior. States already trying to get ahead of the problem. Since January of last year, 41 states have introduced legislation banning election-related deepfakes, according to Public Citizen. Eight have enacted those bans into law. That individual going into the voter box must know what you believe in. And that can't be done if someone is deceptively using your name, your image, your likeness. Not possible. Some laws requiring AI-generated content to include clear disclaimers, others making it a crime to use deepfakes in an attempt to shift voter behavior within 90 days of an election. Critics arguing that such laws infringe on constitutionally protected free speech. This bill is an affront on our First Amendment rights. They say HB 986 has improved. However, this is not preserving our liberties. Many election experts say these bans actually don't go far enough, so voters are going to have to keep a watchful eye on all election content they're observing. Rachel Bade, ABC News, Washington.
Three Mid-State students are on their way to taking their very own company to new heights. They're getting a business boost after winning thousands of dollars in a Shark Tank style competition. Finn Wakefield, Jaden Adler and Rick Canosa are Howard High School students turned entrepreneurs. They decided to launch their own business, Window Magic, specializing in window cleaning at residential and commercial properties. With help from some mentors in the community, they now have $10,000 to expand and grow their business after participating in the Foundational Leadership and Entrepreneur Experience competition. One day or day one, and we chose day one, so we just started it. We had this great idea, and an idea can't come to life unless you pursue it and you do it. So we did it, and just naturally over time, we've seen it get better and better. We obviously, you know, have had goals, and to see those be met has been, you know, a great feeling. To hear from those who mentored this trio, and for a more extended version of this story, be sure to tune in at 6 on WGXA News. Well, as we head to break, let's take a look around the Mid-State. You're taking a live look at Mercer University's five-star stadium. The time is now 642. If you're just waking up, thanks for joining us and happy hump day. Yesterday was another long day in court for Trump. Prosecutors want a judge to punish the former president for what he's saying about witnesses in his hush money trial. The fines and even potential jail time Trump faces coming up after the break.